Okay, we got this comment from T. Lawton says, okay, file management. This is on the video I did talking about how Studio One does its file management and how you should just embrace the way it's designed rather than trying to do it differently. That can lead to files being lost. There's no reason for that. Just let Studio One handle it for you. Um, but T. Lawton says, uh, why can't we set Studio One to overwrite the existing mixdown file? This is one of the most frustrating things about it. Um, being a software developer for 35 years, I know it's not hard. There could be an option for it. Um, that would mean it works as it does now. It turned off. Why not give me the choice? I don't want a new file with an incremented number file added to the name. So here's what that means. If you were to just do some mix downs of a song, it just names the mix down unless you change it, the title of the song. And if there's more than one, then it just creates an additional file and it adds a number like this. Mix down two, mix down three, mix down 200. It just incrementally names them. So here is, I can't speak for the developers. Um, I've never heard of any software doing what you're asking. Um, I cannot imagine a reason why that would be a good idea. So let's, let's demonstrate what's happening so we can all be on the same page. So I've got a song here, and I'm just going to export this little four-bar range um, of the song. And we're going to call this... Um, so it defaults to the file name of Mixdown, which I will give you... Not a great name. Um, I would rather it default to whatever the name of the song is. So I actually misspoke earlier. But let's name this the name of the song. This is a hit song. This is the name of the song. Um, it's, I love it so much. Uh, and let's just say, let's just keep it away file for now. That's fine. Um, and so we say start and end marker. And I say, great, do it. We're good. All right, so it's exported and it has opened up that folder which it just created for this. So when you have a mix down, when you do your first mix down inside the folder for this song, this song is called This Is A Hit Song, it creates folders as needed for any files that the song needs to reference. So currently, I don't have any audio in this song because it's just a, I mean, it's essentially just a blank session. Um, so right now, the only thing in the song folder is the song file itself. This is what Studio One opens. And then it's referencing this mix down folder we see here. And this is a hit song dot wave is the song. Okay. So far that all makes sense. Now let's say we come back the next day and we work on the song. And we do a new mix down. By the way, I'm hitting command E to open up this window. Um, I believe it's control E on the PC. You can also come up to song export mix down there. Pulls up this window and it does remember the name I chose before. So if I don't do anything else and I just say okie dokie, it does this. So the first one just gets the name that was given. The second one, if it's a duplicate file, it adds a 2 to it. And honestly, I don't know if this is a Studio One thing or a Mac thing. Typically, if I were to do this in any other software, it would say, there's already a file with this name. Do you want to replace it? And you can say yes or no, which this is maybe what the person was wanting. Um, but instead of doing that, Studio One just creates it. And if there's a file that exists, it just incrementally adds a number. So this is the second one. If I do it again... You can see now it is a th has a three, and that'll happen forever and ever. Now, I will agree with you that naming things this way is terrible. One, two, three, not super helpful. I disagree that you want to always just have one WAV file for your mixdown. Why? Because mixdowns change. I'll give you a case in point. I was doing a project for a client, um, so I took on the client, and then I hired a mix engineer and a mastering engineer to do the work. Um, and so I'm kind of managing that process, paying the engineers and getting the client here. So the client gets a mix and she's not happy with the amount of reverb on the vocal and she wants something changed. Well, as it turns out, as we investigate, the, uh, the mastering engineer had simply just pulled the wrong mix and had mastered it. Well, guess what? If all your mixes are the same name, we can't just have him go back to a previous mix because it's on, there's only one. It's a terrible way to work. It's a terrible way of managing files. Here's how I do it and see if you can find a way that works best for you. But for me, it looks like this. I export. As I'm exporting, I give this a date, typically at the end, so that if I'm sorting, uh, you can go either way. You can put it at the beginning. So if you're sorting by file name, the date is there. I typically put it at the end, and I just put the date in. Now, I've got a macro on my computer for typing in the date like this. Um, you can create that yourself. I use an app called Keyboard Maestro to do that. Or you can just type it in all normal. Um, to me, adding a date 
some sort of a time stamp, I don't necessarily put the time, but a date to it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Because now I know, okay, that's the version that I did on August 8th, right? Versus, oh, that's version number three. Now I can have a timeline. I come back two days later and I work on it and I say, oh no, it's not the 8th. Now it's, you know, it's November 7th. Now I don't have to worry about overriding a previous file. I can always get back to this mix and now I have this mix. To me, that just makes more sense. I, I, I understand file management is a touchy subject, and the, I can guarantee the person who left this comment does not like this answer. But the answer is just take care of it yourself. Like, take responsibility for the way you name your files, which is the way it works in just about every situation I can think of where you have a an app that is spitting out some sort of a file. So when I create a document in pages and I want to spit out a PDF file, I have to be smart about how I name that PDF file. Um, now, I will give you that when I do that, it'll have the option to replace, and maybe that's what you're asking for. I would argue I would rather not replace it because I want a paper trail. I want to know, like, man, let's say I do mix this mix on the 7th, and I say, man, I listen to it a few days later, I say, man, this mix sucks. I really like the mix I did on the 28th. I think that's the one. Guess what? If I overwrote the mix, I don't have it anymore. And then if I also didn't use save as inside of Studio One or perhaps even the save new version feature, then I'm doubly screwed because I can't get back to this file because I overwrote it and I can't even go back to that previous version of the mix inside of Studio One. Don't like that at all. An easy way to at least back yourself into a corner if you're not using save as or save new version is to at least when you do your mix downs, don't overwrite the previous one and add dates so you can always go back and find the one that you're looking for. You can file this one under opinion, but I really do think this is the best way to work. Hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. See ya.